The full moon has shone down on humanity for our entire existence. And for just as long, we've looked back and wondered what it is, what it's made of, and how did it get there? There's definitely stories about the moon in all cultures, the Maoris, Indians, Chinese, and I think the moon is one of those unifying symbols across the, across the planet, just because it's so easy to see. Astronomers at the Royal Observatory in London have been studying the moon for more than 300 years. But Dr. Sheila Kanani is as fascinated as much by fable as she is by fact. What we can see here is our familiar crescent phasing into a full moon. And when the moon becomes full, you can see all sorts of different features. Here you can see the man on the moon, the eyes, the nose, and the mouth. Early scientists came up with an explanation for the man on the moon, believing that the moon was a world like our own. The dark patches they thought were seas and gave each its own name. The left eye, as we're looking at it, is the Sea of Serenity. It's about 700 kilometers across. Yet these same features can mean different things to different people. Other cultures see different features on the moon. So for example, Chinese cultures see a rabbit and the two ears are on the right-hand side of the moon as we look at it, with the body of the rabbit curling round the face of the full moon. And that rabbit is said to be grinding the elixir of life. We now know the moon is neither man nor rabbit, but it was formed from the debris of a cosmic collision between Earth and another planet-sized object nearly 4.5 billion years ago. It's been our constant companion ever since. <laughs>